All right, so let's get started on our health system. Now, health is gonna be a script which is going to keep track of the current health for both the player and the enemy and anything else that you want to be able to damage. So let's get started on that. I'm gonna go down to the combat folder and this is where we are gonna store all of our combat related scripts as we are gonna have quite a few in this course. So what we're gonna do is right click on combat, go create new uh, script and we're gonna call this one health. Create that, open it up. And here inside of the script, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by deleting the process function as we don't need that. Although we are gonna keep ready because we will be needing that. Then we're gonna add in a class name. So class name, health. And the reason why is because we do want to be able to reference this class later on in other scripts. So it's handy to have a class name here. And then what we're going to do is we are going to create three different signals. Now, these signals are going to basically be called when a certain thing happens relating to our health. The first one, so we're going to go signal, and then we're going to call this one on change. Now, this signal is going to be emitted when our health changes, okay? So if we increase health, if we decrease health, if our health changes in any way, this is going to be sent over. And it's going to have two parameters. It's gonna have a current value, which is of type int, and a max value of type int. So it's gonna be sending over our current health and our max health. The next signal is going to be called on take damage. And this is gonna be called when the, um, whatever thing has this health script takes on damage, okay? So if you want to have a sort of damage flash or you want to have an, a particle effect appear, you can connect to this signal and start that when this is triggered. And the next one is going to be called on die. And this is going to be called when our health reaches zero and the object is destroyed. Now, as well as this, we also want to create an enumerator, um, which is going to define two different values. Now, an enumerator is basically a custom data type, which has preset values. And we're going to call this one post death. And we're going to have two opening and closing squiggly brackets. And we're going to have the values of destroy node and restart scene. Now, an enumerator, the way this works is basically we can just go post death dot and then we can go destroy node. And that is basically then its own custom value, okay? So we'll be able to switch this over in the editor for what we want to happen to um, this object when they die. Now let's get started on our variables. The first variable is gonna be called current and it's gonna be of type int. And this is gonna be our current health. Likewise, we also then want a variable for our max health. So it'll be of type int, and by default we'll make this uh, we'll make it 100 by default. Now we want to be able to modify this in the inspector, so let's add the export tag at the start, and then for our next variable we want to have another export variable, so we want to modify this in the inspector, and it is going to be called post death action, and it is going to be of type post death. So in the inspector we'll be able to choose destroy node or restart scene. Okay, destroy node basically is going to destroy the node when it is when it has reached zero health, whereas restart scene is going to restart the scene. Now, the reason we want this is because for an enemy, we want them to be destroyed, whereas for the player, we want the scene to restart. Okay, we don't want to destroy the player node, otherwise that will um, bug out our game pretty bad. And then we're also going to have another export variable for drop on death. And this is going to be basically an object that we can spawn in when this when the health reaches zero. So for example, if you have um, creatures you want to destroy and you want them to drop gold or you want them to drop items, you can do that this way. Now, with all of our variables set up, we can then go down to the ready function. And all we're going to do here is go current equals max. Okay, so we are setting our current health to be equal to our max health at the start of the game. Now we're going to fill out the rest of the functions that we're going to have. The first one is going to be called take damage. And this is going to have a parameter of amount of type int. Now this take damage function is of course going to be called when we want to damage this health. Um, so we're going to leave that blank for now. We're going to move on to the next function, which is going to be called die. And this of course is going to be called when health reaches zero. And like with take damage, we also want the opposite, okay? You might be able to pick up items like food that might regenerate your health. So we're going to create a function here called heal, which is also going to have an amount variable of type int. And those are the three different functions that we are going to be using. Um, so now let's actually fill them in. So over here in take damage, what we're going to do is we're going to start off, for, we're going to start off by subtracting the amount from our current health. 
So we'll go current minus equals amount. And then what we want to do is call the on change signal because our health has changed. So we'll go on change dot emit current and max. And then we also want to call the on take damage signal as well. So on take damage dot emit. And then finally, we want to check to see if our current health is less than or equals to zero. And if it is, we will call the die function. So if current is less than or equals to zero, then call die. There we go. Now down here in the die function, what we want to do is first of all, call the on die signal to notify anything that's listening that we have in fact died. So on die dot emit. Then what we want to do is we want to spawn in our drop on death. So this here is basically going to be um, a scene. So it could be a world item that we have created with our uh, inventory and items course. So down here, we're going to go if drop on death doesn't equal null because we don't actually want to try and spawn something in if that variable is not set. So if we have something to spawn, we're going to create a variable called drop. This is going to be equal to drop on def dot instantiate. And this is basically going to spawn in that object. We then want to add it to our main scene. So here we'll go get node uh, root. So slash root slash to get the main node. And then we'll go dot add child and we'll add in the drop. And then we need to set the position of this drop because right now it will spawn in the center of the world, whereas we want to spawn it at whatever just died. So for that, we'll go drop dot position equals get parent dot position. Okay, because this health is going to be its own separate node as a child of the enemy and of the player. So we'll get the parent's position and then we'll make sure it doesn't spawn in the floor. So we'll add a bit of verticality to that. So we'll go plus vector three, zero on the X, 0 0.5 on the Y and zero on the Z. So it's going to spawn about half a meter up in the air. And that is it for setting up our drop. Now, the next thing we need to do is check to see what the post death action is. So we'll go if post death action equals, and we can then go post death dot destroy node. So if we have set that to be destroy node, then of course we'll destroy the node. So get parent dot Q free else if, so elif uh, post, whoops, post death action equals post death dot uh, restart scene. Then we are going to restart the scene. And to do that, we can just go get tree dot reload current scene. And that's all for the die function. Then finally, down here in heal, we basically want to do the opposite of take damage. So we're going to go current plus equals amount. But there is an issue here, and that is the fact that we have the ability now to have more health than our maximum allows. So we need to make sure that our current health does not exceed the max by going if current is greater than max, then we want to set our current to be the max. So current equals max. And then finally, we want to call the on change signal. So on change dot emit current and max. And there we go. So that is our health script set up and ready to go. And this is going to work for both the player, the enemy, and anything else that you want to take damage uh, in your games. So how do we actually set this up as a node? Well, for our player here, we're going to select the player scene, and we're going to click on the open in editor button, okay? Because we want to start modifying them. And what we're going to do is we are going to right click on player, add child node, and we are going to create a new uh, base node, which we are going to rename to be health. Now, it is important that the name of this is strictly health with a capital H, as that is how we are going to find this node later on. We can then drag in the health script, and you'll see here we have a max variable we can set, so we'll keep that 100. For the post def action, we're going to change that to restart scene for the player and drop on def. Um, since we're the player, we don't really want to drop anything, so we're going to keep that as empty. And in the next lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to start setting up the ability for our enemies to pursue us and then deal damage to us. Okay, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you all then.